Hey guys, welcome back to Collective Perspective episode 45. We're going to talk today about the old Xbox. Not just on any Xbox in particular, but all Xbox. We're going to talk about the collectability and how the lack of, or I should say. Yeah, the, the, the fact that it doesn't exist. <laughs> um, Craig just had this idea as we were sitting here trying to figure out what the heck we were going to talk <laughs> about today. Uh, so good job, Craig. Always love talking about how the Xbox is doomed. I know, uh, and it's really standpoint. sad, but because it doesn't, it's 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 just so fascinating. It's been around so long, and somehow it still hasn't even gotten close to the ranks of anything PlayStation or Nintendo or even all the competitors yeah. that aren't relevant anymore. You think about the Xbox; it's like twenty-two years old now. Um, the PS One. After it turned 22, let's say that it was like 2017, it was collectible by then. It was collectible before then, right? PS1 oh, games yeah. were were going up in price. Um, I mean, I wasn't collecting until like 2014, 2015, so I can only speak so much. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it doesn't add up. You know, 22 years ago, what Nintendo console was out? The GameCube... Uh, oh, the wait, am I doing this incorrect? What was 22 years old and already collectible? The N64? Yeah, absolutely. Super Nintendo, um, yeah. You know, Sculptor's Cut was a thing. People had already looked into... People were collecting full sets of, of the N64. Um, I don't know what the deal is with Xbox. It's this crazy phenomenon of, like, no one giving a dang about it. Um... And I guess we're talking specifically about the original Xbox here, but as as time has gone on, like the 360 has followed suit, and the Xbox One still has games coming out, so I don't know how much that really counts. But um, yeah, but you think? I mean, there's plenty of collectible PS4 games. That's fair. Um, I don't know. Do you have any theories as to why the Xbox is just so hated? <laughs> I have multiple. So it kind of goes console by console generation. Um, the original Xbox still a bit of a mystery, if I'm being honest. I mean, obviously there's a handful of games here and there. Like, if you want to get, like, a big box deal Pedalion or an Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast, Futurama. It's like there's all those always... games are in the... You know, there's always a few in the 200 range. But, I mean, on average, I think the average Xbox game is still, like, less than $20 for probably 80 percent of the library which is <laughs> pretty be. wild and it's not like there's plenty there's plenty of games under that 20 dollar limit that are very hard to find low print but just nobody really seems to care um i think for the with the original xbox it kind of comes from the fact that it just doesn't have the lineage that nintendo or sony or sega atari any of these people have just because they're older when you think of the, all the big players xbox is still the most you know the most recent one which is weird there just hasn't been anything new in terms of like console manufacturers and stuff like that really since then you know there's some weird crap like the n-gauge and stuff but it's like that's not really like a big name thing they never were even back then uh not a super big competitive player so i think really it's almost like anything like it's almost like that cutoff of like the 2000s it's like starting there was just like a weird time for it to be because maybe people just haven't gotten old enough yet uh in terms of like more generational uh sentimentality with the xbox like they could be with sony or nintendo um i don't think that's the biggest factor but i definitely think it makes a difference and uh I mean, if we're being real, I, they just don't have the exclusive manpower like Sony or Nintendo do. I mean, obviously, there's some like Halo. You got your weird ones like Blinks the Cat and random crap like that. But it's like none of those are uh, hard to find or uh, super, super beloved, to be honest. No, you know, of course, nothing against people that love a lot of Xbox IP. Um, but it's like you think about Halo, all those games were mass, mass, mass produced. So... Excuse me. <clears throat> so, problem, you know, you think about... Hmm? The problem is, like, if I tell someone, any average collector, even myself, like, what are some Xbox, original Xbox exclusives? Like, yeah, you say Halo, and you say Blinks, and then what? Fusion Frenzy? Like, 
there's just only so many that you can actually name and there are a ton even if they weren't like i don't know xbox studios or microsoft studios back then like even if they were just like some third party developer making a game for the console nobody's going to be able to say that like like this game spike out battle street i don't even know what that is but somebody was talking about it in the discord and uh it's like one of the most expensive on the platform um and it's an exclusive but like I, have you ever heard of that game no and so. i uh and it's like with the original xbox there's also a big thing of how much better the ps2 did comparatively it's insane you know basically 130 million more consoles sold overall and even though the original xbox beat the gamecube gamecube is still nintendo so even if a lot of those games were missed by people back then a lot of nintendo fans like to go backwards and play all the games for their favorite series they like to collect all the nintendo games uh, so I think that's kind of where GameCube evens out compared to Xbox, even though Xbox sold more. PS2 just did so much better. Uh, when it comes to the 360, honestly, I think it's a similar problem. The console did way better, but it did way better with, like, the mainstream stuff. Like, the mm-hmm. Halos, again. A lot of people played Call of Duty and Madden and all those things. So it's like, it, those 80 million people that bought an Xbox 360, uh, probably more than 60-70% of them were kind of... Uh, not the hardcore gamers, so to say, or uh, hardcore collectors. Uh, it was mostly the people playing the mainstream stuff. And again, nothing wrong with that. But we're just talking about the effect on collectability here. And then when it comes to the Xbox One generation, obviously nobody liked the Xbox One for a very long time. They got better as time went on. Those first few years uh, were pretty awful, honestly. Uh, none of the exclusives were very good or they got canceled. Or even you think about the Halo Master Chief Collection, it came out and it was garbage when it came out. And it took them a few years to fix that as well. And then, a few years into the Xbox One, it's like they introduced Game Pass. And now anyone that has an Xbox doesn't want to buy their games anymore because, oh, I could just get it on Game Pass and it's so much cheaper. And Xbox has built a modern day ecosystem for themselves uh, where they teach their player base to not buy video games they teach them to play a subscription fee so nobody that really plays on xbox actually buys any video games whether it be digital and especially not physical uh most people that have the most recent xbox uh have the xbox series s which can't even play physical games and we've uh seen and talked about the leaks on this show about the next iteration of the xbox series x that doesn't even have a disc drive so uh, in terms of modern Xbox collecting, those games are all collecting dust on a store shelves or uh, not even getting physical copies because there's not even really going to be a way to play them in a few years. And they taught their player base, uh, we don't need to buy our games because we could pay $15 a month and not worry about it. I think that if Sony or Nintendo was like, yeah, the next console is about to come out and it's not going to have physical media then people would be sprinting to buy every physical Nintendo or PlayStation game that they could, you know? Mm -hmm. And with Xbox, they're already not buying games, so to them it doesn't make a difference. (laughs) That's true. I mean, you have have an Xbox Series X. I can't imagine you really play anything on there that's not on Game Pass. Am I wrong? Um, I would say more than half of what I play is on Game Pass, for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. So... And the games that you do get for it, do you get them physically still or no? Yeah, for sure. I don't buy digital mm-hmm. games. Um, most of the time I'm playing Game Pass. You know, I buy my mm-hmm. annual freaking Call of Duty. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't buy a lot of modern games in general. Um, That's fair. But, you know, if I'm picking up a game day one, it's going to be physical. Mm-hmm. But is it going to usually be for the Xbox if it's multi-platform? Yeah, absolutely. Is it? Okay. I didn't know if you'd go Switch. I don't... Mm, I can't stand buying multi-platform stuff on Switch, but that's another conversation. <laughs> totally fair. Some people don't care, but I totally get that. But yeah, those those are kind of my, uh, my thoughts and theories on why Xbox is yet to be collectible. But uh, I'm still, of course, in favor of collecting for Xbox, uh, especially if you are the collector on a budget, because... I, I don't know. I, I bet you could get an entire Xbox One set for, like, less than, I don't know, maybe $8,000, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know if anybody has a list, 
What, what, remember like a couple like a year ago you told me <laughs> how many exclusives were on the xbox one that weren't on pc or anything yeah else? I, th- I think it ended up being like three or four games yeah so <laughs> very very small list because at one point i wanted to buy like i wanted to be like all right i'm gonna buy every game that's truly exclusive to xbox one like you can't get it on pc nothing else is only on xbox one and it was like five or six games and i think like three of them were connect games Make sure you guys get Halo Five before <laughs> for your Xbox <laughs> shoot exclusives. Up, it's gonna shoot up in value. <laughs> gonna go from no. six to eight dollars. That one will certainly be on PC one day. No <laughs> doubt about that. Oh um, yeah, I think it's just gonna randomly get added into Master Chief Collection one day with an update. It'll mm-hmm. just be like a surprise thing. It's the only game that's missing, except for Halo Infinite. So the uh, the Master Chief Collection, one of the only games that like. I don't know, doesn't drop below $30. Like, that one is actually worth picking up, collectible. I don't know. Mm. Um, well, they don't produce I, it anymore, so. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it is out of print f- because... Sorry, go ahead. You made a few good points, and I didn't remember them all. Like, I wanted to say some stuff. Um, I'm sorry, I kind of rambled. <laughs> no, that was good. Um... There's definitely... Oh, okay, so you were talking about how people, like, will go backwards to play Nintendo series games. You know, they'll go back after they played... What's a good example? We don't need an example. You get the point. Um, mm-hmm. But long-running franchises don't exist, right? Except for Halo. And then later you get Gears of War. What, there's, like, five games? Like, that's... I think that's a big one that I have never thought of before. Um, there was no Blink's three on the 360 there was no otogi never got a sequel on a new console like i'm really stretching here looking for exclusives <laughs> uh there's no lost odyssey 2 uh, another beloved 360 game uh but it's like a lot of those games are not successful enough i guess to really justify being having a lineage either so i mean i'm like I'm trying to think of 360 games too i'm like operation darkness that weird atlas game no one knows about like <laughs> What console is that? 360? Yeah, 360 exclusive Atlas game. There's a so, game for you guys to go out there and look for. Something I had mentioned in a recent video, um, the the player base, the target audience was like older people, I feel like, with the original Xbox. They had Fusion Frenzy. They had a handful of games that could be rated E that your kid would want to play. But I feel like everyone was targeting teenagers and up over there at xbox and because of that the nostalgia factor doesn't quite exist for yeah that's a great point for the people who are in their 20s that grew up playing xbox um that that doesn't exist so this nostalgia factor is huge when it comes to collecting and you think about ps2 and gamecube they had mario they had um something that's not rated m ratchet and clank sly cooper like they had a lot of games that you would want to play as a kid until you grew up and then you got into grand theft auto and then you got into your um more mature things like god of war your um jack and daxters and stuff and and those things were it was like you could grow up with your ps2 whereas you had to already be kind of grown up with your xbox I, i can't imagine there were a lot of people who were under 13 with an Xbox. Um, but, yeah, it, it was definitely advertised towards the older crowd. Um, the sports games, the military shooters, everything. And and because nostalgia is such a big thing for us as collectors, yeah, I think that I think I've driven the point home enough. No, yeah, you're, that's a great point that it was, you know, marketed more towards adults. So there's not going to be as much of a nostalgia factor because most people were already grown up when they had it and played it. So that's an excellent point. Do you think that it being an American-made console has anything to do with it? No, I think it just... I think it came a little too late because, I mean, even when you think about retro game collecting, a lot of people will attack you for saying like GameCube and PS2 are retro. So if you have that mentality, then Xbox will never be retro, you know? That's a good point. And I think I think that's a piece of it. 
And I think it really is, it really, at the end of the day, it comes down to the library. I mean, Xbox has a lot of really good games, but you compare that to the insanely large and vast and fantastic library of PS2 games and the insane first-party support on the GameCube, it really doesn't even compare. So I think it it really has mostly just to do with its library not being uh, as... It's still good, but not as good as his competitors. You can cover almost all your bases by owning the other two, which is, it's that I guess you're right. You know, playing games, while it shouldn't be the same as collecting games, it is. They definitely intertwine. They are not separate entities. And mm -hmm. if there's nothing that you want to play on a console that you're collecting for, you're not going to collect for it. And that's, that's it. Yeah. As as someone who famously has sold a ton of games from his collection over the years. I could tell you, you know, I thought it was really cool when I had almost every Atari Lynx game. Uh, and then when I realized I'm never going to touch them ever again, I was like, why do I even have these? <laughs> and then you put it towards something that you actually care about. So, so there's definitely going to be, there's got to be dozens and dozens of rare Xbox one games out there that no one has discovered. Mm -hmm. I imagine there are some real shovelware pieces of garbage Kind of like this collection I have back here of Game Boy Advance. There's got to be some <laughs> seriously rare stuff out there that I want to sit no down gets... and research. But you guys, if anybody likes researching things, Xbox One, whether you're looking for rare games or you're looking for variants, get out there and, and do some eBay. -ing. Yes, please. It would be really cool to know. Every, every day I wake up with the itch to start collecting for Xbox One and I hold myself back. <laughs> so, I mean, even right now, I'm on price charting, you know, as we always say, it's not, it's not gospel, obviously, but the most expensive game that I see that's not a collector's edition is $50. So, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to have a really big set of video games for really cheap, Xbox One, and there's, you know, it has basically every multi-platform game you could think of fantastic fantastic way to collect if you just want to play good games and you don't care about having stuff other people care about because you know what you should collect what you care about anyway if you love the xbox one more power to you yeah and that's the thing um a lot of this stuff it's not going to be low quality like craig said mm -hmm. he always says this you can find some serious quality on this console um a lot of times PS4 games, well, I don't know if that's true. Like <laughs> PS3 to 360, all a lot of times the PS3 version is going to be worth way more. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that carries over to PS4 and Xbox One, at least right now. It does. It definitely does. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you if you if you have both consoles and you just want if you just want the game to play, the Xbox version is going to be cheaper for sure. A few exceptions. Um, you mentioned Steel Battalion. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, but a few exceptions to like the stuff is always dirt cheap. You even like I brought these up because they're interesting and like they're not games that are exclusive per se. You got Futurama on Xbox. That's a big mm -hmm. one people care about because it's got I don't know some hidden episodes that were never never released or some crap. Teen Titans, I don't know why that one is expensive. That is on all three consoles. Mm -hmm. It's su super weird, because it's dirt cheap on the other two. Um, Spike Out, I mentioned Spike Out Battle Street. I don't know what the heck that is. Um, <laughs> it must be a good game. That must be the only thing driving its price <laughs> up. Um, you've got Dino Crisis 3. I think this one's cool, because, you know, that's... A franchise that's dead that people really want to have back um and even it's though it's unfortunately a terrible game though. even though it's unfortunately a terrible <laughs> game apparently it's like the conclusion to this trilogy of games and um i mean as a collector i think it's a very cool piece you've got like oh, yeah. you know we didn't even mention it but there are just a plethora of dreamcast sequels or whatever like mm -hmm. there's so much sega love on the xbox Oh, yeah. I think that's its a lot of one people, saving grace. Yeah. A lot of people over the years have called it the Dreamcast 2, which right. is a bit of a stretch, but yeah. there is a lot of there is a lot of really cool weird like 
Sega extensions, just how GameCube got a lot of weird, cool Sega extensions. And even PS2 did. You know, it's like, people forget about uh, Space Channel 5 Part 2 on PS2, and they, a lot of people, for some reason, forget that Sonic Adventure and Adventure 2 were Dreamcast games first, you know, like, weird stuff like that, so... Yeah. It's, they they lived on in a weird bay, but, I mean, Xbox got Panzer Dragoon Orta, so I guess they kind of won. <laughs> Xbox definitely got the most, I I would assume, mm-hmm. without, you know, backing my statement yeah. up with any research. It seems like they got the most <laughs> love. Yeah. Shout out to Panzer Dragoon Orta. What a good game. Great game. Um, I don't even know what's expensive on 360. It's very minimal. I think there's a... Uh, Maybe an NCAA basketball game. I don't yeah. know. Uh, football. NC. Oh, 14. Yeah, NCAA. Uh, yeah, football. Um, I know El Chavo card is a hard one to find. Mm. Uh, like a like a Mexico exclusive racing game. Yeah, that's like it says it's one hundred and seven dollars. Looking at that now. Um, Armored Core, a hundred dollars. But Armored Core is also on a bit of a high kick right now with the newer game that came out recently. Yeah, a little, couple of random things here and there. Yeah, another Armored Core game, so mostly collector's editions again. Uh, that game I mentioned before, Operation Darkness, $80, so a couple of random ones, but nothing, nothing super crazy, honestly. There's some fun stuff you could do with 360 collecting for sure. Like, you look back at um, Bioshock, that game says xbox and microsoft exclusive <laughs> or something on it and i i don't even remember yeah. the release of that i was pretty young but mm-hmm. um, it, it did come out on 360 first that's pretty cool like that's a cool thing yeah. to own you know mm-hmm. yeah and it had a slip cover and all this cool stuff really cool stuff i think oblivion came out a little bit earlier on it as well uh because bethesda's always had a bit of a uh a bias towards microsoft even before they owned them um, it has the best version of Peter Jackson's King Kong. Oh, does it really? Yes, which is the best movie-based game ever made. Is that on PS3 or no? No. Original Xbox, PS2, GameCube, oh. PSP, and 360, and PC. That's pretty cool. That's like Gun. Gun was on the old consoles, and then it also came to 360. Yeah. Well, a lot of people forget 360 was 2005. That was really early. Wow. You know... PS3 and we didn't come out to 2006. That's only four years after the Xbox One or the original Xbox launched. So there's a lot of uh, weird crossover there where it's like 360 would just get the game, but in HD. So yeah, a lot of cool, that's neat. A lot of cool weird crossover in that way that a lot of people forget about. See, if you're looking for a reason, that's another reason right there. You can go try mm-hmm. out some games that um, are probably at least look better. You know, maybe you have some beloved PS2 games. Um, I don't know if that's a motivator for you out there. Yeah, unless we forget the 360 controller, one of the best controllers ever made. So, <laughs> um, that's all I got. What about you? Um, I think that's it. I'm I'm looking. There's 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 good games, but uh, if you are a collect to invest kind of guy, don't bother. <laughs> I guess that's the moral of the story. If you're collect to play, if you're collect to play, Xbox the way to go. If you're collect to invest, don't bother. My one collector's pick for the Xbox One, Marvel Pinball. Go get <laughs> it. It's like cheap and pretty uncommon. And I could see people caring about it one day. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, here, let me give you guys a, a, a hot tip, a secret, if you will. I do know of one rare Xbox One game, and that is ReCore, the Definitive Edition. So, keep an eye out for that. That game, uh, I had a copy of it, and I sold it because there was no other copies on eBay. And I ended up selling my copy for, like, $80 when I bought it. And, wow. like, I bargained it for 5 bucks. So, because I just don't care about Xbox One collecting. But yeah, when I at the time, there was not a single copy on eBay. And that was about two years ago. So maybe maybe the market's flooded a bit more since then, but definitely an uncommon one to look out for. No one's ever sold an Xbox One game for $80. <laughs> exactly. I think I have the world record. <laughs> world All right, record. guys. We are going to cover some... Uh, we're going to talk about our 
collecting goals, or recap our collecting goals next episode. So we will see you guys soon.